never trust a man with a dangly earring. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back to my channel. Oh, that was too good. Um, my name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing Love Island USA season five episode, whatever episode this is. It was long. It was long. But it was good. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. Honey, grab some snacks because we're going to be camped here for a minute. Okay. The episode starts where they left us off at movie night. And the first title is Mean Girls, showing Hannah and Carmen talking smack about Cassie. She's kind of shallow. <laughs> she kind of is. She's always talking about herself and shit. Leo's too good for me. In the moment, I was closer with Leo than you. That's all it is to it. Did you see me ride for you there? You did? Should've, should've done it. Oh, damn. Yeah. I said that I liked you more after Casa. You should say it out loud, though. <laughs> the hater. <laughs> and before you guys run with it, that's a joke. I know how some of you guys like to start a riot. Um, I wasn't surprised that they showed mainly them talking about Cassie because what they said about KK, they've said to KK's face. It's only KK who doesn't like to heed the advice of her girls. Honestly, this is a lesson she's gonna have to learn on her own. We said the same thing about Sydney last year, but look at them, they're still together, so who knows? KK and Keenan might be the love story of the century. But yeah, um, Hannah later on tells Cassie that her feelings for Cassie have changed since Casa Amor. She's like, well, you knew I wasn't close to you then. But how long have you been in this villa with Cassie? Hannah, girl, come on, be for real. Um, she did apologize. Carmen, I think, apologized too, but they apologized to Cassie later. However, they apologized to Mattia right away. So I don't even know if I fully buy that apology. The next uh, title was the never ending video story showing KK's knee buckling breakdown. I look good on camera though. Oh, I don't want to watch this. No, I don't want to watch this either. At least we get to see it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, you're too good. good for that. It's fucking done. It's done. You're too good for this. As I was watching this, I was thinking to myself, I really hope she looks at herself looking like Boo Boo the damn fool crying over damn Keenan and says to herself, now when am I going to stop being a clown for a clown? But is that what happened? No. Next title is, <laughs> it was the main event for me, child. The Boner collector where mr i shut down all of Nadja's advances oh sorry i shut down all of that girl's advances is seen not really shutting them down i got readjusted the belt see i did the right thing fuck it come here oh hold huh hold hold He didn't say everything that happened in bed. So that was news to me. Everything, like I told you guys, exactly is what happened. Obviously we knew what was gonna be shown in The Boner Collector. I still feel like it happened two different nights and I would have liked for them to show the two separate nights, but it's fine. What I did not know is, uh, according to Nadja, she did a, an interview with, I forget the article, but she did an interview with them. She still hasn't responded to my DM, guys. It might not happen, it is what it is. But she said they actually did share a kiss. It just was not shown on television. Production, this was your opportunity to absolutely gag us. Not just the people in the villa, but us outside of the villa. I feel like a part of movie night should show some unseen footage so that we, the viewers, are also like, <gasps> what? Like, that would have been... That would have been something cool, but whatever it is, what it is. Um, she says that they kissed. I believe it, to be honest. If you could let him, if if you could let her tuck on your peen, I, I I highly doubt you're gonna be pushing away a kiss. But some people do think like a kiss is more intimate than sex, even. So, who am I? Uh, yeah, KK. She's in a dumb child. Let's move on. After movie night, uh, Johnny and Cassie have a little powwow about Leo. But when you said the door opened with Cassie, I was talking about feelings. I was like, I know the feelings would be there. Are you pursuing that? 
And he was like, no, I'm not pursuing that. We both regret it. He's like, I regret it. He's like, if I could go back in time, Cassie, I would. That's federal prison time for a man to look you dead in the eyes and lie to you. He's a boy, he's a fucking boy. Yeah, that was a clear sign for me to be fucking done. Like after hearing all this, like I'm, I'm good. If you guys are gonna constantly talk about, I'm done with him, I'm done with him, I'm done with him, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, then be done. You talk all this talk about being done, just be done. There's a saying that says what's understood doesn't need to be said. If you were truly done, this wouldn't be a conversation anymore. Even if it was producer led, it would not be a conversation anymore. So I'm here just like, I know that both of them would cave if Leo was to give any of them even an iota of pursuit. And that's literally what happened later on. Oh my gosh, like these men have to do barely anything and the women are like putty in their hands. And I know the argument for a lot of them is the fact that they can't escape that person. We live in this villa together. And so, and so there are bare people to talk to. You don't have to talk to that man. You really don't. It is not by force. Mattia is all of a sudden being very understanding in regards to Cassie and her whole uh, situation. You're a man and also with me, you express how you want something serious, I do too. I'm sorry. It's not your fault, like, like listen, like I, I, I'm not blind. I know you really liked Leo, you did, and that's fine. It's I not just like found that because, like, like, like your was... mind was like elsewhere. Exactly, and I, and, and I that's, felt that And that's that not too, something yeah. you can control, and I get that. Yeah. I, I see it and I'm just like, I get it. Oh, you're not too old for this anymore? You're not at the point of your life where, Mr. I'm 29, I'm too old for this. Mm, interesting. I feel as if this whole age dynamic, because he is making it a thing, is going to be a thing. If not now, definitely in the future. If they even stay together, child. As we know, Destiny does not like talking when it's not time for her to talk. So here is um, Zay saying, hey, we got some things to talk about. She says, we don't have anything to talk about. You think there's nothing of importance to talk about at all? Not pertaining to anything with me and you know. After we came back from Casa Moore, the first thing I feel like you were doing is just talking to other people and getting into their couples. And our connection would just remain stagnant. What is the purpose of you being so concerned about the whole situation in the movie with Mike? That was the closure I... that I needed on the com on the- But like, why did it have to come to that? You think I planned that? When I say something, you just get, you get overly defensive over it. I don't care so what you to, think, Zay. For you to- the, I don't care. If you don't care what I think, then why are we even talking? You're right. I saw this combustion coming from a mile away. Like, she has a tendency of obviously feeling away, but either only wanting to talk on her terms or not wanting to talk at all. And I feel like that's a recipe for disaster. Me personally, I was saying this in Discord, I used to be emotionally constipated too. And the time that it comes out, it is a mess. It is a mess. Like you really just burst on people in either the wrong circumstances or the wrong person altogether. So in this situation, I was looking at Zay like, Zay, be for real. Like, you're wondering why she cares about a guy she cared for being intimate with somebody else. The same reason why you care that a girl you care for is caring about another man she was intimate with. And then with Destiny, I need you to also be for real. Look at the situation that he's in right now. Granted, I do feel like... I do feel like he should be a little bit more understanding about what's going on, but she doesn't divulge enough, in my opinion. And this is a pattern with her. She did that with Marco. She felt the way about Marco, but just shut it down. She did She did the same to Harrison, did the same to Jonah, did the same to, to Mike, and is now doing it to Zay. Like, at some point, we're going to have to put our big girl panties on and actually talk through what it is that we are thinking and feeling. And not just on your terms, but preferably when things are happening. So right now, Zay is asking you, can we talk this through? There's nothing to talk about. There is, there is. Cause then later on, she's gonna get upset that he doesn't wanna sleep in the room with her. And then um, she decides to sleep outside. I girl, you should have stayed in the room. What you, what you sleeping outside for? It's cold out there. Sleep in the room, sleep in the room. Um, and then she's like, so are we done? And he didn't wanna talk. Like you see how frustrating it is when people only wanna talk on their terms? Exactly. Jonah and Taylor decide to make things exclusive. I don't even, I, I, 
I forgot y'all were even here. Okay, so happy days for you. Um, Leo and Johnny have the same chat that they've had the past few episodes now. I honestly didn't care for it. Basically, it's him being unable to make a decision and she feels dumb and manipulated. But in my opinion, yes, I do like Johnny and I did like how she was pursuing him, but it seems like she forgets that she was also pursuing him. He didn't prey on you. You weren't this helpless damsel and then he came and swooped you like like you were a willing participant let's come on at this point we know kk's whole mo she's gonna be mad at keenan she's gonna pull up on him with the smoke he's gonna pull the baby voice and she's gonna forget why she was mad so what did i not tell you literally that's why i pulled you when i seen the you video tell me you was getting your fucking willy wanked in the fucking bed i'm kind of getting to that point okay are you okay with that? If you're to that point where you're tired of doing it, then that's fine. Get the fuck out of the way because somebody else will. You felt good saying that, huh? It's not about what I feel. But I don't really, feel but fucking that, but, good but no, 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 at no, no, all. KK, you are the one for me. There's never going to be a better connection than walk through them dumbass, rainbow ass corridor, whatever the fuck you want to call it. He's been telling me a lot of things that every girl wants to hear. And I've been feeling those things back, so. <laughs> Oh, I'm pissed. Mm. If you guys watch any Tyler Perry show, skit, whatever, these two remind me. <laughs> these two remind me of Angela and Marcus. Oh, so you got VD? Checkmate. Who you been with? Was it Keisha? You got it from Walter. What are you talking about? I ain't gay. No, I slept with him. I literally said, all he needs to do is make her some toast and she will forgive him. All he had to do was put on the baby voice and it was happy days. To the friends of KK, I pray for you. I pray for you. I pray for you. I pray for you. Because I can only imagine the trenches you've had to be in <laughs> defending your girl on the internet. I can only imagine the amount of coffee you'd have to drink to stay up fighting all night long on behalf of your girl. In the trenches. KK is in the trenches. All it took was a baby voice. You saw your man getting a handy when he had already adamantly claimed he shut down any advance. Any advance. And the so you... I forgot to even tell y'all the best part. Best being um, sarcastic. It looked like they had sex in the bed. Girl. I hope he don't give you something you did not come to the villa with. Leo is now admitting to Cassie that um, it ain't 50-50 between him, uh, between her and Johnny. It He, he wants her. I was at a point where I was like, I'm not going to just bury how I feel mm -hmm. about you regardless of everything. Because mm -hmm. um, I know that I still feel the type of way for you. I can't give her 100%. No, I can't get over you. Mm. You're my best friend. And I can't believe I did that to my best friend. I was considering still being open to Leo. Now, my feelings were just, they're gone. And this is why people were asking for a direct answer. There is no 50-50, you knew. You knew you wanted Cassie. You just wanted to see if there was a chance. So you gotta keep your options open with Johnny just in case you need to default back to her. But here's Cassie in this conversation talking about, um, well, because Leo was basically saying he's going to try to make, um, make amends with her. And she said, well, you can try, but I can't, be, uh, I can't be sure of anything. Is it so hard to just say no? Is it so hard to just say no? Like, I don't, I don't even want to, I don't want to hear her complain about not putting in enough effort and not whatever, because how many times has she said she's done, she's done, she's done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. So if you're done, there shouldn't even be a crack in the door. He shouldn't even be in the same post code. Why are we leaving the options open? 
Like me, like I will, I will never understand. Like if you're one of those women who are okay with your man having sex with other people and then coming back to you, like that's totally fine. You know, I shouldn't even say that because she's not even, he's not even her man. He wasn't even her man. Like you literally have all the, you have every reason to leave, but you're going to stay. You're going to stay and accept his piss poor example of an effort. God, uh, oh, this is so, oh man. Honey, I'm on his hair. Psh, the girl look good today. Okay. She always looks good, but she look exceptionally good today, which is great timing because here goes Kyle with the foolishness. I've been pulling away basically because I felt like the energy had kind of like changed. At Casa Moore, you did want to hang out with me, but once we got here, just your energy since we've been here has definitely changed. My head, honestly, isn't right here, to be honest. Yeah. Like, and ever I've since we got back. You're wasting my time, my precious right. time. I'm wasting your time, okay. You know? So, we're good. I don't want this to be a thing, you know? And let me say my piece, please. Because I don't care about your So piece. then go. Thank you. We're done, go. Not another love bomb situation. I am not yet healed. I have not recovered from Elam in UK love bombing Catherine. Here we are with Kyle love bombing Imani. Now, if you noticed, I really had no faith in Kyle. I barely spoke about him. I think I gave him a nickname and that was it. I didn't talk about Kyle at all in Casa because I felt like this was gonna happen. I didn't really see his interest in Imani. So when she brought him back, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, maybe it's a, it's a lack of screen time situation. I don't know. I, <laughs> Imani's pettiness of kissing him then walking away. I'm like, girl. <laughs> The pettiness in this villa is just at an all-time high. However, I do think that some of the other girls could learn from Imani in the fact that when she says, oh, this is something that I don't feel like we had agreed on in this relationship. So therefore, since you have um, gone back on our agreement, our arrangement, I'm out of here. And she meant that. I don't see her backtracking to Kyle if they end up both remaining in the villa. I don't see that happening. Some of these girls can learn from that. When you say you're done, just be done. As we know, the resident simp of the villa is KK. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so, was that mean? Oh my God. Um, so Leo is commissioning her to see how he could make Cassie as weak in the knees as KK is for Keenan. Oh, cute, cute. Does that look bad or should it looks restart? great. I love it. I'll help him out with it because I love that he's putting in the effort. He's acknowledged his wrongdoings. Oh my gosh. Why is he doing this to me? Oh. Oh, not the seashells. Mattia made me this coffee. Mm. Leo brought me this Coke. But, but you know your want... favorite drink is Coke. <laughs> the bustle. At this point, this show is pure comedy. I'm not here for the love. There ain't no love. Well, mm, well, <laughs> we'll talk about it. I'm here for the comedic relief. You mean to tell me a handful of seashells, a lipstick smudge on the mirror, and a cup of Coke is effort. And it actually is working. I need my man, my man, listen, okay? Don't you dare think this is effort. Not for me. It might work for 22 year old Cassie, it doesn't work for damn near 27 year old Yelaine. No, thank you. As quickly as I gave Imani props, I have to take them right back. I have to take them back because girl, why the hell are you talking to Bergie? I keep saying like anybody, any girl would love a man like Bergie, but yeah. like I didn't say why well, Imani deserves a man like Bergie. And I just wanted to like put it out there. Yep. Shoot. And see how you feel. Yeah, it's, it's tough. <laughs> it's definitely a tough spot. Um, yeah. I actually made you a pancake. Oh, did you actually? Yes, I can get it. It's delicious. Is it? Yep. So I, I just wanted to tell you that, you know, no pressure. I was just calling Carmen and Kenzel the scammers of the season in the last episode. Aymati, you might take the title, babe. You might take the title because you know you don't like that. You know you don't like that. Kyle came in with a Villa Visa via Imani. This girl is looking at that $100,000 check via Bergie talking about, I made you a pancake. Let me go get it. <laughs> girl. 
Imani. Imani, I love you, but I gotta give you the smoke, the same smoke that I gave to Carbon. Stop with your scammer business. What is this? Talking about, you know, I need a good man like Bergie. Oh, okay. <sighs> it's a sad day, guys. I think Hannah and Marco have solidified that they're gonna be my witness judges. That's the only people you could root for at this point. I'm already fell in love. You really feel that way. You never love somebody. You never really love somebody, though. Where's Hannah at? Don't worry about it. Why? We're doing something. It was like, I just need to talk to you guys, because I'm like, oh, we're horny. We're trying to fuck, Berg. You guys have a good time. <laughs> OK. <laughs> well, it'll be like two minutes, Berg, I promise. <laughs> Should I just stay here? No, 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 no. Stay at the couch. You're good. Stay at the couch. But yeah. watch on the couch. Yeah. If you could. OK. I wish. I was being recorded. Maybe when I get my TV, I'll I'll do like <laughs> I'll do like some snippets of me reacting to the show because guys, I swear the way I got up off my couch and screamed at my laptop, cackling at Bergie. Bergie, read the room. Read the room. It smells like sex, or at least it's about to. Get out. <laughs> Why are you here? Why are you here? He's like, Do you guys want me to you want me to go the door? Should I go the door? Or are you guys about to? You're about to have, oh, oh my, oh, okay, let me go out the door, okay, good luck. <laughs> and then he literally went and sat on the couch outside of the door to make sure that nobody was going to interrupt. Like, I mean, good looking out for your girl, but oh my gosh, Bergie man, read the damn room. Bergie at least is able to read his own emotions. And he tells Taylor that Imani did express some interest, but she has nothing to worry about. I feel like I have a stronger connection with you, so I don't think I'm gonna explore anything there. Okay. Because I'm gonna take some time to process it, but like, because I, I just got told. I like, I would want you to like, I want you Make to Make a be, decision yeah, too fast, I would want... and then regret that decision, and then backpedal on it. Yeah. yeah. You know, I kind of like that Taylor was saying, I'm going to give you time to marinate on it and then you can come back to me. Because one thing I don't like is somebody rushing to a decision and then backtracking on that decision. Because let me tell you, I'm not going to have grace for that. I'm not. So I'd rather give you grace on the front end so that on the back end, I don't feel stupid. Even if you feel like, mm, I'm not going to go there. Let me, let me just give you the day. Give you the day. Think about it. And then you can come back to me with the with a well thought out answer. Yeah, um, it was it was never there for him and, and Imani. Even back when she first came, yeah, she was giving him the energy trial and he was reciprocating, but it was like a, I don't think it was the same kind of like, I'm saying too much, huh? I'm, I was gonna say something about Berg, you right. Let me chill out. Leo is continuing to let Cassie know that he is going to make that effort, honey. Effort. But I just wanted to just like put a smile on your face again because I know we were, I put you through so much, so. Oh my God. Is it because like Johnny ended it that you're like? No. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I'd rather put my heart on the line for you because you're the only girl that I want. If she didn't end it, I would have ended it. Mm. Cause I was tired of being confused. I was tired of like knowing deep down I want you and you're the only girl that I want. Mm. I can't get over you. This manipulative fucker, like this whole thing that he's doing to Cassie is manipulation. I have to be reminded that Leo and Cassie are 21 and 22. Because I think if I was 21, I probably would have fallen for this. Granted, I knew from a young age, listen, dating was not for me. I was not at the right place mentally. I'm gonna wait until I'm in my mid to late 20s to get into that for real, for real. So. Yeah, maybe I wouldn't fall for that. But a lot of people in that age group would fall for this. So I have to remind myself, they're young, they're young, whatever. Also, sometimes you, you just gotta go through what you gotta go through. And if this is the hill that Cassie wants to die on, that Leo wants to die on, that any of them wants to die on, then hey, die on that hill, honey. I hope that you're resurrected and you learn from this experience. Um, I think that Leo has a lot to learn from this experience. Women are not just disposable. And it's like both women, how he treated, um, what's her name now? Johnny in this whole situation, basically as like a, oh, I was gonna say something so bad. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. This is why God is mad at me today. Um, 
But yeah, how he treated her as like a disposable person and then also how he disposed of his feelings so quickly for Cassie and engaging with Johnny in that way. Um, I think that Cassie can learn to set some boundaries because even with this whole situation, if she's going to pursue things with Leo, I actually want her to lay out clearly what are things that she will and won't accept. And it's a one strike you're out situation with him. And then with um, Johnny, all that glitters is not gold. Just like Imani, you can be with a man who's telling you all the right things and love bombing you or whatever and still end up to be an asshole. Look at the actions. Pay attention to the actions and how they align with the words. And then ultimately, use your reasoning. Have some discernment. Make some clear judgments. Ask your friend for advice. Don't just go for the first thing that's hollering at you. I will say she was also interested in putting it on the line for him too. So it's not just Leo. But uh, yeah, I hope that they all grow from this experience. So in the evening, the Islanders get a text. And honey, thank God. Thank God this dumping came with a dress code. They might be able to dress individually, but as a collective, it's giving chaos. They look a mess, but today they got it together, all right? So the text basically is uh, referring to a red wedding, which is... Um, from Game of Thrones, where four people were, uh, you know? So there's obviously gonna be four people leaving. They're doing the four bottom girls and the four bottom guys. The girls were Casa, all Casa girls. So no surprise there. The guys, it was Zay. And Zay is surprising me because apparently in the polls, he was supposed to be the favorite, even over the Villa people. So I don't understand how that happened. Um, so Zay is at the bottom. Mike! But y'all been wanting to get rid of Mike for a little bit, so I get that. Mike was at the bottom. Keenan! Mmm, scrum de yum yum. Keenan and Leo. Not surprised by Keenan and Leo at all. I, oh, I wanted so bad. Because, okay, so what happened was um, Sarah let the girls know that the one with the lowest voice was Hannah. So everyone was like, <gasps> Shakora, oh my gosh. Anyways, moving on. I wanted so badly, and this is so sick of me, but this is where I'm just at right now. I wanted so badly for her to say the person in the bottom for the guys was Keenan, because in that moment, Keenan and KK were exchanging kisses, little kissy faces out of, get out, get out, <laughs> get out of here. Oh my gosh, they make me, oh, they boil my blood, I tell you, they boil my blood. Um, Yeah, I hope Keenan gets out. And we know as soon as he gets it done, she's going to follow right after him. So, hey, double homicide. It is what it is. I, If I'm to make my predictions, who do I think is going to go? Well, if Zay is at the bottom and he's a castle boy, I think that he's likely to go, if that's the case. And then maybe... See, here's the thing. The vote was for who you like, not who you don't like. If it was who you don't like, I think absolutely it was going to be Keenan and, and Leo. Gone. So that's what makes it a little bit tricky for me. But if I'm going to place my bets, I'm hoping it's Kanan. And then for the girls, I think the girl who's going to follow is maybe, maybe one of the Taylors. Probably not Bergie's Taylor because everybody loves Bergie Joe. Um, yeah, probably Taylor uh, S, C, D, E, the white Taylor, whatever. Um, yeah. Okay. So I've been saying in the beginning of the season that we were going to go live. I've yet to go live. I know. I'm so sorry. The problem is I be gallivanting. So I think what we're going to do is either Saturday nights, not this weekend because I have plans or Wednesdays since there aren't any episodes. You people who have made it this far, it's been almost 30 minutes. Wow. You people who have made it this far, let me know if you would prefer Saturday, but just know that sometimes I do have plans on Saturdays, right? Or Wednesday. The season is almost over anyway, so it'll probably only be one or two lives. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. But yeah, let me know in the comments below what you would prefer. Tell me your hypothesis on who you think is going to be leaving tomorrow. And uh, yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.